For many speakers of English as a second or additional language, effective language support and the skills it provides is life-changing. It's the key to unlocking education, employment and social integration. But there's not enough of it and it isn't always easy to access. According to the most recent census data from 2021, over a million people report that they don't speak English well or at all, and over a third are UK citizens. All too often, this potential remains untapped because of language support that is either insufficient or inappropriate, leaving learners without the skills they need. Attending ESOL classes at the right level can be life-changing for many, but funding cuts and policy changes mean that many face an uphill struggle to access provision. The adult education budget, the main source of funding for ESOL, has been cut in half in real terms since 2009. So, what needs to change? ESOL needs to be fit for all, supporting both language for everyday use and also providing language at the levels needed for people to succeed in education and employment, so that people can survive and thrive. We need to know more about the learners who are in the system and those that are not. Currently, there's limited data on this and this should be a priority for a new government. There's a need for a national strategy for ESOL that articulates a vision and a plan for the future of ESOL and the role it plays in both meeting the skills shortage and promoting community cohesion. Let's hear what else experts and students we spoke to have to say. What I love about ESOL, which is English for speakers of other languages, is the students bring so much to the classroom. You know, they bring themselves, they bring their history, they bring their experience, they bring all sorts of skills from often from their own country, you know, and, and the language is the barrier to them opening up and being able to use those skills. So ESOL is a fantastic vehicle for people to integrate into life and society, but also to become part of the economy and contribute and to start paying taxes and to be part of, you know, our whole country. The biggest surprise for me, and that came about through the research that I did for the Bell Foundation on ESOL and the, the, the review of the qualifications, is that we have no evidence at all of the 16 to 18 year olds you know, maybe doing BTECs or Cambridge Nationals or A-levels or T-levels. We don't know how many there are. When you think about the on the adult side, I've come across quite a few colleges where the, you know, the data tell you that 50% of the learners have English as their other language on the adult side. And they may have incredibly high level skills that are in demand in the economy, but we don't know. The last aspect on, in terms of data is that the OECD most recent report, uh, 23 report, stated that in 2021, 50% of migrants and refugees in the UK have tertiary qualifications. And without English that helps them unlock the other skills that they bring with them, they have no hope of entering the workforce, you know, at all, or maybe work in very low level skilled jobs. The qualifications that we currently use were first developed in 2014, which is a long time ago now, 10 years. And I do think they need an overview and an overhaul. They, um, in terms of uh, the sort of three areas that we look at, which is validity, coverage and reliability, I think there's areas for improvement in all of those. And the other big part of it, though, which isn't so much to do with the qualifications themselves, but it's how they're funded. So I think what's happened as funding's got tighter and tighter and tighter over the years, um, the washback has been fewer hours and therefore teachers teaching to the qualification rather than teaching the whole of the curriculum. Um, so if we were to have qualification, a qualification review, we also need a funding review and we need more hours so we can deliver a more holistic curriculum. The one thing I want 
from the next government and from the mayors that are being elected now is that they think about ESO in a different way, that they see ESO as a positive rather than a negative, that they think about ESO in terms of the support they can give to students who can become a really important part of our society and bring skills to the economy which are sorely lacking. So a really positive attitude. The second thing I'd want though is a really concerted strategy in each area that understands the different types of ESOL that are needed to meet the diversity of ESOL students across the piece. So some people need really basic ESOL and entry level, others need professional ESOL, ESOL that will help them to use the skills they've got in the labour market in sometimes quite complex jobs. So it's a complex type of English language for work. My key ask is to have sufficient data across the range of further education and skills provision. And that means, in other words, for learners who are 16 and older, so that the sector is in a better position, in a good position, to monitor the progress that learners make, not just within programmes, but across the range of their educational journeys. And that will in allow us as teachers and managers to review the provision much better and make changes if we find that, for example, some courses have a dropout rate where people are forced to leave because their English isn't good enough. We have everything to play for to make the learning more consistently good. I encourage the government to support more the ESL classes and the college in general because this is a way to improve people's life. My key ask would be for a national strategy for England. Uh, we have them in Wales and we have them in Scotland, but we don't have them in England. That would encompass um, fair funding, free courses for all, um, flexibility in funding, so to offer the hours that that students need rather than what we what they're given. Um, it would also encompass um, local and national planning, and that local planning would be with the combined authorities. But also, I'd like to see fairness, so not a postcode lottery between the different um, authorities or ESFA provision. And the final bit of that is workforce development. We need um, ESOL qualifications for teachers, as in teaching qualifications, and we need CPD for existing staff to really you know, hone their skills and stay at the top of their game.